What's going on YouTube? My name is Tom Davis, aka Dark Transmissions, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I draw skulls. Now, I know I did a video about this recently, but I wasn't really happy with how that video turned out. Not only was it not comprehensive enough, but there was a little bit of camera shake to it, and I'm looking to eliminate that. So, in the meantime, I've created a much more sturdy rig for my camera, and there should be no shake. So, with that being said, let's get into it. So, like I said guys, the purpose of today's video is to show you how I draw skulls. I'm going to go through three main sections of the video. Uh, we're going to do a head-on skull, we're going to do a three-quarter view skull, and we're going to do a profile view skull. And I'm going to go through how I structure them all. I won't be going into how I shade or texture those skulls today. It will just be structure only, but it will cover everything you need to know to take away that information and to create your skulls at all of those angles. Uh, maybe down the line I'll get into doing more obscure, strange angles for skulls as well. But uh, for the purpose of this video, and just want to keep it under a half an hour maybe uh, in length. I will just cover those three angles and uh, give you all of the information you need to start you on your road to drawing killer skulls. So uh, stick with me and uh, hope you enjoy. Okay, so for the purpose of this example, I'm going to be using uh, just a standard printer paper. Uh, it's just a sheet of printer paper folded in two to create this A5 sheet. Uh, it's always good to use printer paper or something like that for when you're practicing because uh, it's cheap and it's light and it's re easily recycled. Um, the pencil that I'm using is a Rotaring 600 0 0.5 mil pencil. Hope you can see that there. And uh, for a rubber, if I do make any mistakes or if I want to clean up any structure lines um, or work lines, I just have this like stick rubber thing that I got years ago and it's still going. So, like I said at the start of this video, we're going to be uh, demonstrating three views of the skull. We're going to be doing the front down view, we're going to be doing the three quarter view, and we're going to be doing the profile or side view. So, let's get into it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my drawing by starting by drawing a circle here. And this is going to be the basis for the front on skull. Now I know I want to fit three of these across the page, so I'm not going to go too big with the skull. The circle doesn't have to be perfect, it just doesn't have to be perfect at all. So, in order for me to make sure that all of the skulls are uniform as I go along, I'm just going to bring a line across the page like this. Again, everything at this point is just quite rough. Um, the main thing at this point that you're taking in is the, uh, the main structural ideas. It does not have to be perfect. So once we've got that, we can start putting in the other circles. These will be the basis of the three-quarter view and the side view. The side view I'm going to push out a little bit more because the side view of a skull is always a bit wider than the front-on or three-quarter view. Back of the head uh, tends to jut out a little bit more. Okay, so... They're not perfect circles by any means, but they don't have to be. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to... Um, now, this is not necessary to do right here, but for the purpose of creating a parallel and just for the purpose of example, I'm going to create an axis line. And I'll explain what that is in just a moment. So the axis line comes straight down through the center of each one of these circles or balls, for want of a better word. And my method of drawing skulls is based loosely on an the Andrew Loomis method. It's a kind of simplified version of that method. Let me just straighten up these axis lines. So the axis line, what the axis line does is it allows us to tilt the skull if we want to. We're not tilting the skull in this example, um, but what it does is if I was to move this, it would mean that the skull is looking slightly up or slightly down. But in this example, I'm using it as a center point by which to measure out parallels on each side. So for the front down skull, this is more important than it is for the, tr the three quarter view or the side view. So let's crack on. For the, we're going to start off with the front view skull. And the first thing we want to do is we want to set up some horizontal dividing lines. These horizontal dividing lines will, uh, 
will help us establish the main features of the skull. And I'll put them in and then I'll explain what they are or what they're for, what they do. Okay, so we have a number of horizontal intersecting lines with the with the axis line. This top one here is the top of the eyebrow. This one here is the bottom of the eyebrow or the top of the eye line. This one here is the bottom of the nose. This will this one here is the top of the top row of teeth, and this one here is the bottom of the chin. So let's go in and give the bottom of the top row of teeth. We're all, all we're doing at this point is we're just establishing things that we will build on later on. So, first thing we want to do is we want to put in the nose. And how I do that is by very simply creating an A shape right here. And then inside that A shape, I create another A shape, and I just join them like that. Okay, so it's A shape, smaller A shape, and then join them like that. So it's almost like a very extreme... Uh, extremely angled uh, boomerang almost so then the next thing I want to do is I want to put in the eyes so what I'll do is I'll come up to where the eyes belong I'll come out a little bit from the center and I'll create this upwards and outwards moving line upwards and outwards it goes from that line to that line and it moves like that very simple and then I'll do the exact same thing mirror that line on the other side don't worry about perfect symmetry at this point. The main thing is that we get the structural elements down so you get used to drawing a skull. Do not worry about being a perfectionist at this point. It will not serve you well to worry about the nitty gritty details. Just get the structure down and you can go from there. So in order for us to complete the eye, we need to start at this point now and move outwards and down. So we were going outwards and up, now we're going outwards and down. And when I say outwards, obviously I mean out from the center line. Same on the other side, roughly trying to match it in distance from the center line. Now for the bottom of the eye socket, we start here at this inner point, and we're going to swoop down and up again, like this. All right, again, don't worry about being perfect, we can fix it later on. But that's the basic idea, I'm going to come in a little bit here. Always be sure to you know, be be at least a little bit self-critical and uh, understand whether or not they look roughly the same. They should look roughly the same. Don't worry about it being perfect, but they should look roughly the same. Now we're going to go in and do the teeth. So we're going to do normal human teeth here. In, uh, in a lot of my work, you'll see that the teeth are somewhat demonic. Uh, they're long and sharp and gnarly. Remember now, the front of the mouth is, it's called a muzzle. Now I don't know all the names of all these bony parts uh, because I did not study anatomy, but I do know that this is called a muzzle. The front two teeth are gonna be the foremost teeth. They're the closest ones to you. And as the teeth go around, they also go back. So you wanna make sure that when you do these little A shapes for the teeth, the next one over, it doesn't start from the bottom. It starts from somewhere in behind the first one. And the same with this one. And as they go around, they get thinner. The next step then is to create the uh, the upper part of the jaw. So what we do is we come out one, two, three teeth, and above the third tooth, you start with the line that comes in towards the nose, and then out again. Same on the other side, in towards the nose, but then out again. Okay, that will be the the front of the muzzle. Now we're gonna co we're gonna go ahead and create the cheekbone, and this is what this is where the circle is useful again because it gives us a measure for the cheekbone. We're basically just following the arc of this, this little arc of the circle. And then we join that to the muzzle that we created. Now we're going to come up and create the side of the eye sockets, which is where the temple resides. Uh, it's important at this point to remember that we're working with a sphere. The skull is basically a sphere. So when you're drawing the jaw, or the, sorry, the, not the jawbone, but the cheekbone, Remember that the cheekbone wraps around the head towards where the ear would be. So, what that means is that when we draw this cheekbone, we want to make sure that it wraps around the side of the head. 
you see how I'm drawing the side of the head here and it gives the impression that the cheekbone is going around and behind it the cheekbone comes in and then up alongside the side of the eye and that creates the effect of the temple we'll carry on with that a little bit later but right now what I want to do is create the side of the nose just like that just like that very simple and then from the nose we come in with these two little lines and they tend to give the impression of a, a certain kind of depth like the nose is coming out from the skull it's coming towards us um, we can throw in some more lines there for extra depth uh, so then what I want to do is I want to do the top of the nose that's all that means is just doing a, a kind of an A shape above the nose just like that that's the top of the nose and then the bridge of the nose the bridge of the nose is very simple it just means creating parallel lines on each side of the axis line just like that very simple the bridge of the nose joins the brow in this A shape like that much more of a sharp A shape and then we can carry on from there up like this matching the the lines on the eye sockets to create the eyebrow these lines here that we created the sides of the eye sockets we go around the eye and then kind of back out again like that that becomes the forehead but it also wraps around to the top back of the head so let's just complete the top of the skull real quick very simple then what we do is we come down and we draw the bottom line for the top teeth and we can start putting the bottom jaw now now the bottom row of teeth it's always important to remember that for most people they have a slight somewhat of an overbite so the top row of teeth always sits just over the bottom row so the bottom row here will look smaller but it's not actually smaller it's just sitting in behind somewhat behind the top row of teeth but it will help to give the impression of depth if you do it like this then we'll just draw a small arcing line down here to represent the chin now what we want to do is we want to create an A shape like this and that, that finishes the chin. It gives the impression of the chin. The chin is jutting towards us. Then what I'll do is I'll come in from the bottom row of teeth, the, the very outermost teeth, start a line, come out and down, and then back up again, disappearing in behind the cheekbone. This will be the start of the, the jaw. So then we come out from the cheekbone, in like that towards the jaw down towards the the top row of teeth and when we get to the same line as the top row of teeth then we want to turn in towards the chin okay so that is very simply the front view of the skull let's move on to the three-quarter view now when I mentioned earlier on that we base these on somewhat on beach balls um, the re or balls. The reason that I said that is because if you see beach balls, they're divided into like multiple segments, like an orange almost. So what we can do is for the three-quarter view, we're going to have them facing this way. All of these skulls are going to gradually face this way. What we can do is we can come from the top centermost point, which is where the axis starts, and we can come down and around like this, like it's curving around the ball. When we get to the point of the top of the nose or the bridge of the nose, we come straight down then because all of the features then are mostly straight down. It's only the top of the skull that goes back as it goes around. Paying, paying, paying a lot of attention to uh, perspective at this point, we have to respect perspective. So let's start in with the nose. Now in this case, the nose, we want to give the impression of there being uh, a kind of three-dimensionality to it. So we're going to start at this center point, which is here, right here. And we're going to, as we come up, we're going to bring the nose out. You see, that's the top of the nose there, it comes out. And then we'll do the other little A shape. So it's one big A shape, tilted forward. And another little A shape, tilted forward. It will help later on to give us the impression that this is moving this way, that there's a perspective, uh, that is a three-dimensionality to it. So then let's carry on and start putting in the eyes. The same as before, we're putting these lines that go up and out, and then another line that goes down and out.
okay now it's important to remember at this point this skull is facing somewhat away from us so as details go further away they get smaller but only slightly because it is only a skull after all there's not that much distance but it will be thinner so we're talking about that so whereas over here it goes like this far out over on this side it, it's only really a, a very slight a shape that we see right here and we will develop that later on let's carry on with the eye we can bring this bottom of the eye line over just to make sure that we're roughly in the right area so let's come down and swoop back up around the same will happen over here more or less now let's start putting in the teeth again and because we're moving around the muzzle and everything on this side is smaller than everything on this side we're going to see less teeth on this side than we will on this side so as we go around the teeth get smaller quicker and we see less of them so that should start to make sense to you now uh, we can carry on with this line up here creating the muzzle as we did before and same over here and then bring the cheekbone down so the cheekbone rests roughly here the bottom of the cheekbone I should say so we're gonna bring that across and match it over here now we're seeing more of the side of the head at this point so we're getting to see how the cheekbone wraps somewhat around the head so you bring it down cheekbone here imagine the cheek is a circle and then it comes around the head and carries on now we'll do the side of the eye socket by starting roughly here above the side above where the ear is kind of and we'll start going in and upwards towards the eye moving around the eye where the eyebrow would be and then up and around the back of the head like that then we'll start putting in roughly where the eyebrow would be well actually let's just let's go back to the nose go back to basics a little bit so we have a nose here we do one side of the nose and then we do the other side and remember this side being bigger side of the nose is going to look bigger too let's do these lines for the side so now what we want to do is we want to draw the top of the nose as we did before over here and then the bridge of the nose each side of the center line uh, is not going to be the same here over here they were parallel but over here that side is thinner than this side then we'll join them with this little a shape and that a shape becomes the eyebrow or matches or meets the eyebrow <clears throat> now we can bring this in here like that see what i just did there with that line and then back down like this because remember as the eye goes around it wraps around the skull so you're going to see it's almost like it looks almost like it's cut out let's come down around to our cheekbone and then finish the forehead up here and then let's finish this jaw up here or the top row of teeth by coming in from the back tooth and up it disappears in behind the cheekbone the circular cheekbone and now we're going to do the bottom row of teeth once again the bottom row of teeth is shorter or smaller in appearance than the top row that's because most of these teeth are obscured or hidden by the overlapping top row of teeth then we're going to create the bottom of the chin just like this and the A shape here to give the impression of the jutting forward chin from the back of the bottom row of teeth we come down and out and then back up again to create this line here now we're going to start here with this little line that overlaps the side of the skull down and in and then up and in this is like a little finger here kind of joins the jaw to the skull when there's tendons come down as far as the top row of teeth and then start to move in towards the chin on the other side you don't see as much so it tends to look more like that you don't see as much of this jaw so you can it's mostly obscured by this side of the face so from the cheekbone you can just come down with this line and then sort of come in where it makes the most sense 
and that's a basic example of the three-quarter skull now let's move on to the side profile arguably in my opinion the easiest uh, of all of these um, with the with these other skulls with this one you've got to duplicate one side on the other side and with this one you've got two completely different sides so those are the most difficult to draw this is the easiest to draw and I suppose I saved that for last because it's the most fun or easiest to draw so how I usually do the side profile is I start at the top of the eyebrow and I bring that in like that then I come down where the bridge of the nose would be let's bring the top of the nose across so we know where that goes so I come in from the eyebrow, inwards towards the axis, come straight down parallel to the axis, and then I come out again to represent the top of the nose. Out and somewhat down. Then what I do is I come in and somewhat towards this straight line that I've established. Now the front of the face is not straight down. It, people's faces generally tend to slope somewhat outwards. And how we establish that here is when we come back in towards the center line, we're going to create this little bone that sticks up like that. That's this bone here and here. That little bone then will establish the top row of teeth, which lie about here. And then we can start drawing the teeth in. Now what I want to do is I want to do the eye socket. And what I do is I usually just come in some arbitrary distance from the eyebrow line and I go out and down or towards the axis which would be in I suppose in and down and then it's just a case of doing a bit of a side eye socket and then swooping back in and up like that fairly roughly now we'll create the eyebrow up to the forehead let's not worry too much about that right now then uh, the side of the nose if we draw in the side of the nose and these little lines here that represent sort of the sloping nature of the nose that will guide us towards the cheekbone now the cheekbone you could come from where the uh, where the bridge of the nose meets the top of the nose you could come straight down or in a, not straight down but in a more, more or less a diagonal actually and that would give you the cheekbone cheekbone then again is like a ball remember it comes down and around and then wraps around the head like that let's come up and create the side of the eye socket again we're coming from about a point like this towards the eye wrapping around and then up to the forehead and back around the head we'll carry on with the teeth and we'll have those disappear up there when the teeth terminate at the back this line here just disappears behind the cheekbone uh, let's fi finish off the bottom row of teeth or the top row of teeth uh, we'll carry on this cheekbone around from some point in behind the cheekbone we come down then we bring the the forehead all the way around till we have a, a more or less a skull shape now I'm going to create the bottom row of teeth again it will be shorter than the top row of teeth but we all know why that is now because the bottom row of teeth is somewhat obscured by the top row when we get to the back tooth come out and down and like that just more or less like this so out and down straight up and in and then up here there's this bone here remember we, we drew this over here and now we can at the front of the bottom row of teeth we, we draw this little section that's the kind of the gum I suppose um, and we come in and down and then we come out and down when we get to the bottom where the chin line is we come back in swooping up towards the jaw and then we just join those in more or less of an angle give us our little a shape there to give the impression of a jutting chin and that's essentially all that there is to it and um, for in terms of basic structure and um, that that's pretty much all there is to it so we have the front view the three-quarter view and the side view and that's essentially all there is to it structurally once you have learned these once you have mastered these and drawn them over and over and over again then you'll be able to 
really play with the shapes uh, you'll be able to start adding shade and texture you'll be able to start uh, making different shapes like you know I could have made each nose on, on each of these different I could have given them each different size teeth different sized eyes different width of cheekbones everything can be different because every single individual that you draw will be different so it's always important to remember when you're drawing skulls don't always just draw the same skull over and over again change it up a little bit give them a longer chin a pointier chin a shorter chin a wider chin a rounder chin there's always so much more than you can that you can do than just drawing a basic skull but now that you have the fundamentals uh, you have everything you need to structure a skull in all three of these angles. Okay, so there you have it guys. That's the How I Draw Skulls extended version, uh, including the three main views, head-on, three-quarter, and profile. If you want to see how my finished skulls generally turn out, then you can head over to instagram.com forward slash dark transmissions or follow the link for my Instagram in the description down below. I have also created a... Um, how could you put this, like a demonstration sheet of all of those three angles. Um, you can find this sheet on my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash dark transmissions. It's only $5 a month and you'll get this which you can use as a reference for drawing skulls as well as all of the progress sketches that I create for my own personal work as well as commissions every month. You're going to get a lot of content over there. So for only $5 a month you can get access to uh, an, even, an actually improved version of what you just saw, the all, the all those tree skulls in all of those forms, and you can use that as reference for creating your own skulls. Um, if you like this video, if you enjoy this content, then please do subscribe, hit the notifications bell so you'll see when new videos are coming out. Don't forget to hit like and drop a comment down below to let me know what you thought of this video, and also to make suggestions for any videos you'd like to see me create in the future. I always appreciate your feedback and your support. It helps me to know that I'm going in the right direction and I'm doing the right thing. So thank you so much in advance for that. And until the next time, you have a great day. Peace.